Hello, I'm David Harper with the BBC News. The US Infectious Diseases Agency, the CDC, has said Americans should resume wearing face masks in public indoor spaces in parts of the country where the coronavirus is surging. The guidance applies to both vaccinated and unvaccinated people. This report by our North America correspondent Peter Bowes. The US Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says about two-thirds of counties have high transmission rates that warrant the wearing of masks with the Delta variant of the virus behind many of the surges. Some states, such as Florida and Missouri, have seen rapidly rising infection rates. The CDC's guidance is a reversal of its position two months ago and poses a dilemma for many local and state authorities with some highly reluctant to accept tougher measures. Police on duty during January's storming of the US Capitol building by Donald Trump supporters have told a congressional inquiry what happened was an attempted coup. One officer described being beaten, tasered and called a traitor as rioters broke through windows and doors. Police Sergeant Aquilino Gonell was on the front line. He said the fighting was brutal. What we were suggested that day was like something from a medieval battle. We fought hand to hand, inch by inch, to prevent an invasion of the Capitol by a violent mob intent on subverting our democratic process. My fellow officers and I were committed to not letting any rioters breach the Capitol. Republicans have largely boycotted the investigating committee with only two Republican members of, members of Congress on the panel. Dozens were injured in the attack and at least four people died. In a speech to U.S. intelligence officials, President Biden has expressed views that are highly critical of his Russian counterpart, Vladimir Putin, and the state of the Russian economy. The U.S. president's comments came as senior officials from the two countries gathered in Geneva for resumed nuclear talks. Mr. Putin has a real problem. He's sitting on top of an economy that has nuclear weapons and oil wells and nothing else. He knows... He knows he's in real trouble, which makes him even more dangerous in my view. The president of Ivory Coast, Alassane Ouattara, and his former enemy, his ousted predecessor, Laurent Gbagbo, have embraced and held hands at their first meeting since the civil conflict a decade ago. They're having talks at the presidential palace in an attempt to further reduce tensions. Ivory Coast's conflict, which left 3,000 dead, was triggered by Mr Gbagbo's refusal to admit defeat in the 2010 presidential election. Thousands of new recruits to the Ethiopian army have paraded in the capital Addis Ababa following a countrywide appeal for people to help the government fight Tigrayan rebels. Some of the new recruits spoke of their pride before heading off for training. World news from the BBC. Apple, Microsoft and Google's parent company Alphabet have reported sharp increases in profits. The latest quarterly results show Alphabet made $18.5 billion, more than twice the figure for the same time last year. Apple published its best ever profits for the third quarter and Microsoft revenues rose by 21% compared with the same period in 2020. The U.S. government is suspending cooperation with the prosecutor's office in Guatemala following the dismissal of a high-profile anti-corruption official. Juan Francisco Sandoval was sacked on Friday by the chief prosecutor who accused him of consistently abusing his powers. Nicholas Rocha reports. Mr. Sandoval headed the investigations that led to corruption charges against dozens of Guatemalan officials and the conviction of the former president Otto Pérez Molina. A State Department spokeswoman, Jalina Porter, said that his sacking indicated a lack of commitment to the rule of law. She said the United States had lost confidence in the independence of the Guatemalan judicial system. The Biden administration has been putting huge economic and diplomatic pressure on Guatemala and other Central American countries to address corruption, violence and poverty at home, as part of its strategy to reduce mass migration into the U.S. Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, has fired the head of the military amid reports of a bitter rivalry between the army and defence ministry. Ruslan Khomchak will be replaced by a top commander, Valery Zaluzhny. In March, General Khomchak denied there was any friction after local media reported there were disputes with defence ministry officials. The ex-lover of Juan Carlos, Spain's former king, is suing him in the High Court in London, accusing him of harassing her for nearly a decade. Corinna Zuzain Wittgenstein alleges he put her under surveillance by Spain's intelligence agency and hacked her phone. The former king has denied any wrongdoing. BBC News.